Welcome to another edition of Africa Sideways. My name's Big Six Simpson and we've got the Ranger FX4 for you today. Really pops red with black rims. They've got a couple of off-road accessories. The bull bar on the back top. Good clearance, 230 mils, bash plate underneath. And the styling is really, really on point. In fact, it reminds me a lot of the Asus X Rider I had a week or two ago, which was red with black rims. I mean, you can't go wrong with that color. And there is quite a few differences between the two buckies, if I have to compare them, the two buckies I've, I've driven most recently. The Arsuzi X Rider was about 450,000 Rand, so a good 200,000 Rand more cheaper than this car. And you can feel it in the in the in the quality of the seats and the ride quality. This is really really smooth. It's it's SUV levels of smoothness in here. Comfortable leather seats, infotainment system. It's it doesn't have quite as many gadgets of say the to, uh, top of the range Wild Track, which has sat nav and this that and the next thing. This is a little bit more bare bones. It just has standard cruise control, but everything you really need on a car. Very crisply laid out. It, they haven't changed really. This is the same interior they've had in the Ranger for quite a while, and everything works. Buttons feel well made, easy to use. Infotainment system. When you listen to your Peter Tosh, great sound system in here. At first, I, uh, I wasn't sure if this was the twin turbo or the regular turbo, but it is the regular turbo, which puts out 132 kilowatts, which is unloaded, adequate power. I think fully loaded in, in an off road situation, you're going to be fine a bit wanting with only a two liter in here, but if you're not planning to do heavy loading, this engine works just fine. Uh, quite an economical engine as well and, and if you give it a bit of extra tap it doesn't really make too much difference that's something that I have noticed between the twin turbo and a single turbo that if you drive this the twin turbo vigorously your fuel economy goes through the roof but if you drive a single turbo vigorously it's 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 much more manageable on fuel economy probably because it's an extra turbo that's using extra gas and kind of a fish pace so I'm happy with the engine it sounds good you see it goes fast enough um, but they've got the 10-speed gearbox in here which hasn't been missing gears but I just for me 10 10 gears is too much I would prefer a six-speed in here but hey, it's been working fine. No complaints. Stitching is really cool. I'm seeing a lot of this red stitching on different brands. It seems to be quite a popular touch these days. And why not? And you got your sunglass holder here, which this thing here feels a little bit plasticky and could be a bit of a, a weak point on the car. Brakes are good. And then off the line. Yeah, that's fast enough. It's not V6 Raptor speed, but it certainly is adequate, ladies and gentlemen. So this is coming in at about close to 700,000 Rand. So it is, you're paying quite a bit of money for this. It's, it's a good 150K more than, say, a P-Series. And... 250,000 more than the X-Rider but I do feel I do feel the quality in this car the refinement in terms of reliability the Ford engines are not class leading so I would recommend buying this new and getting the the full plan and then you'll be iry eight 
lots of space in the back this feels quite wide it almost feels as wide as a raptor and you know you wouldn't have to work too hard to make this look like a raptor i mean with this red paint job and the and the fx4 logos on the side there they are ticking a couple of boxes here set it put a set of 33s or two inch lift in a set of 35s and some fox shocks on here and you are in business I was chatting to Matey from my friend from Terrain Tamer and he was saying that apparently the new, or was it my friend from Terrain Tamer or Pedders, one of the two they're saying that on the Raptor they use Fox shocks but they don't use Fox suspension, so I mean coils, which I find quite interesting that you kind of, you, they're kind of going halfway, not the full way on the, on the, on the modification. So I would like to see this particular truck, Fox shocks and springs, a set of 33 BF Goodridge or Coopers, and this thing would really, really pop, and would take you a lot of places off-road. I mean, have a look at this color, it just pops. Loving the FX4 branding on the side black rims on red feels solid tough bucky as you'd expect but one thing i don't understand is you bring these limited edition trucks out but you still put the same tires on the same conties i had a puncture with these on the everest so you know, that's what I like about our shoes, they put proper all-terrain tyre on and not highway tyres, it's such an easy fix. It's got some really nice touches, it's got this bull bar at the back, roll bar type thing. Has an extra element of safety and it's cool looking in the back, you hang on to that. Very big bin here, massive. You put a ton on there, no problem. Loads of space in the back, cavernous area. You've got your 12 volt, no USB socket there. It's a bit of a faux pas in this day and age, but pretty much regular Ranger in the front here. Very nicely laid out, it's very crisp. Everything is on point. Loving this trim. Stitching is really on point here. Yeah. I find that the twin turbo does give you more power, but you use more petrol with the extra turbo. What's this up against, ladies and gentlemen, in a very, very tight bucky market in South Africa? Arguably the tightest segment in motoring in South Africa, because it's, I mean, our South Africans love their buckies. Let's go through it. Let's start off with the status quo. You got your Toyota Hilux, which is similarly priced to the similar spec, <coughs> drives very similarly. The only thing that Toyota has on this particular vehicle is, uh, Generally speaking, a better reliability score. Styling on this, I would say, is cooler than a than a Hilux. So that's another point back for the for the Ford. In terms of payload and towing capacity, they're all very very similar. 
Then you have your Mazda BT50, which is I'm going to be getting my hands on in a week or two and taking it up the garden route. Looking forward to that. That is a real dark horse. But there's a lot of D-Max, Isuzu D-Max technology in there. They've basically taken the D-Max technology styling, I mean not the styling, the engine and the mechanics and put some Mazda styling to it and they've got a really really compelling package with the updated 3 liter Isuzu turbo diesel, one of the best engines in the world. So that's going to be a serious contender for this because before the BT50 was basically a, a Ford with a few little cosmetic touches but Mazda are now putting their the eggs in the Isuzu basket and then you've got your Mitsubishi Triton which has got probably the best automatic gearbox in the business very highly rated automatic gearbox um, 2.4 liter diesel turbo diesel which is probably a bit on the underpowered side but in terms of comparing it to this it's probably very similarly powered and But the problem is the new Mitsubishi Triton is sharing too much Nissan. I think the new Mitsubishi Triton is based on a Navara or something. I'm hearing some some rumors from John Cadogan. And also apparently the new Ranger, they're teaming up with Amarok. So I'm wondering, I'm hoping these all these buckies aren't going to be getting watered down in the future. So my advice, if you want to get a cool bucky, this is the time to get it. Get one of these, get a Triton or look at the new Mazda BT50 because these are all compelling packages I'm not sure about the new Triton I think it's going to be watered down next year's Ranger who knows but the current models really do tick a lot of boxes and then if you're going to go into the into the new kids on the block so to speak in South Africa you got your Mahindra Karoo which is probably half the price of this it's a completely different bucky that's a utilitarian farm truck where this is more of a city slicker, the wife can take the kids to school, it's maybe a quantity surveyor has it, somebody with a nice job with plenty of cash who wants a comfortable ride. Okay, let's see what the overtaking's like here. Yeah. Come on, baby. Yeah, see it's not gonna it's not gonna throw you in the back of the seat, but it's 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 got enough power. It's definitely got enough power. And then you can just sit. Doing 9.6 liters per hundred k's, and the Great Wall Motors P series. That is another serious contender for this bucket. 550,000 as opposed to 700,000, and that thing's got all the tech. Radar guarded cruise control, sensors for days, all the gaz gizmos and gadgets, seat warmers, massages, the whole toot. Um, I'm not sure about massage. I think the massager was in the Peugeot. But anyway, the, the downside of all those sensors is it does a lot of beeping. And this, thankfully this car doesn't do much beeping at all. It gets you, lets you get on with the important job of driving. And the handling is really good as well. You can really express yourself in this car. Let's throw it into the corner and it just sits there. I will say for, for pure, for pure, car driving this car is very very difficult to beat you know handles nicely very comfortable great visibility looks really cool has the ability to turn heads which will keep it in the contender for top setting bucky in South Africa it's always been the Hilux and the Ranger vying for ultimate bragging rights and I don't see that changing anytime soon. I do think the Mazda BT50 is going to be making more noises. Back in really wants to get out. Load the clearance, yeah. The red really pops. Let's see if I just get the back end out. Whoa, you see the back ends? It's a willing, a willing competitor. Just soaks up the bumps down the off-road track. Not a problem in the world. And then you go 
You don't even need the foot of the road. Suspension is on point. The first time I drove the FX4 was the, the 3.2 litre and I was very impressed with that. They put a bit more of an aggressive tyre on which I'm, I haven't done on this occasion. Whoa mama. Can we get 3 and 4 by 2? Certainly can. You see it just wants to slide. <laughs> so all in all for the price and the package gets a good honest 8 out of 10 on the Africa Sideways car rating. More to come on Africa Sideways. We take it, we get in the Mazda BT50, we take it up to the garden route. Hopefully we're gonna see Rhino one up there and do some do some dune bashing. So keep it stump, keep it peel, we'll catch you next time Africa Sideways.